2.1, the tangent and velocity problems. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about the tangent line and its definition. So here's a quick little comic for your day. So first we're gonna look at some examples of tangent curves. And when I usually ask the question, what is a tangent to a curve? I usually get the answer that it's a line that hits a curve in exactly one spot. And in both figure A and figure B here, these are both tangents. In figure A, the line T is tangent to our circle. And in figure B, this line T here is tangent to our curve C. And so clearly you can see that there's an error in the definition that a tangent line can only hit a curve in one spot because see this curve C? Here we have this red line is tangent to our curve at the point P, but it intersects our curve in two spots. So we'll need to talk about what we mean by tangent. And here's a quick little comic. She's always off on some tangent. So here's our first example of the tangent problem. Find the equation of the tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. So to begin this problem, let's quickly look at a graph. So here's a graph where I have y equals x squared, and this red line is our point of tangency at the point 1, 1. So we want to find the equation of that red line. But how are we going to do that? How do we normally find the equation of a line? Well, we usually have two points, for instance, then we find the slope, so we have a slope, and then we have one of those points, and we go ahead and we find the equation of that line. But we have a problem in this example right here. We don't have two points, so how are we going to find a slope? Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to pick another point Q. So here's our point Q right here. And we call that x, x squared. Why do we call that x, x squared? Because our equation is y equals x squared. So if we pick some x, then the y coordinate must be x squared. So our point Q is going to be x, x squared. And then to find the equation of that line, clearly our first step is going to be to find the slope. And so what's the slope between P and Q? Well, that's just Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus X1. But again, in this problem, we want that point Q to be as close to our point P as possible. So what does that mean? It means we want our X coordinate to be as close to one as we can get it. In other words, we want the limit, symbolically, the limit as X approaches one, as our X coordinate gets really close to one, of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 because that's our slope. So how are we going to find that? Well, there's various ways to do that, but for now, let's just look at a table of values. So let's look at the next slide here, and we can see that as our x point gets really close to 1 from either side, and that from both sides, the importance of that we're going to be talking about a lot in this chapter. So we see that as x gets really close to 1, we see that our y value gets really close to 2. From both sides, from both bigger values and from smaller values, we're getting close to 2. So now we know our slope. Our slope is 2, and we have our point. That point is 1, 1. And so now we can find the equation of that line quite easily. We're going to use point-slope form. If you don't remember it, please write it down. y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And really, if you don't remember that, write it down, box it, star it, get that in your head. We're going to use it a ton this year. So now we have y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 1. And for the purposes of this class, we can just go ahead and say y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 1 plus 1, and we can leave it just like that. It's simplified enough. So you might be wondering where this table of values came from in the first place. So to start, let's remind ourselves that we said that the slope between p and q was x squared minus 1 all over x minus 1. Okay, now we have that. Let's go to our calculator. 
I think the easiest way to do this example is to go ahead and in Y1 put the slope. So our slope is going to be in Y1. So our slope here, it's going to be in our Y1 function. So basically now what we're trying to do is we're trying to evaluate Y1 at the point 2 to find this value here. So go to second quit, go to your home screen, and click on vars and go over to Y vars because I want to evaluate Y1, which is our slope, at x equals 2, so y1 of 2. It's just like our f of x notation, f of 2. We would have said to evaluate f of x at x equals 2, so y1 of 2, and that does give us 3. Let's try another one. Let's try 1.001. So again, I would go to vars, y1 of 1.001, and Yes, indeed, I get 2.001. So let's say this was a testing scenario and I asked you to find this value, you know, near one, which was the goal. I wouldn't want to make this big table during a test. So what I would probably do is I would probably find one value a little bit smaller and one value a little bit larger so that I was doing that from both sides thing. So I've already done a value of one really close but slightly larger. And let me now do one from the left side. So slightly smaller. Just slightly smaller might be y1 of 0.999. So that's all I would do during a test. I would see that from both sides, so from x value slightly smaller, from an x value slightly larger, I was getting really close to a y coordinate of 2. So now let's look at example two, the velocity problem. Suppose that a ball is dropped from the top of a tower 450 meters tall. Find the instantaneous velocity of the ball after five seconds. What does instantaneous velocity mean? That's going to be a huge word for our course this year. It means what is the velocity at exactly five seconds? And what's our little problem here? Again, just like we saw in our last problem, we don't have a time interval. Usually we find average velocity, which is between two points, like maybe five and 5.5 seconds. If we have two points, we can easily find the slope. But I want the slope at precisely five seconds, so I don't have two points. So again, I'm presented with that same exact problem. So what we do is we compute the average velocity over smaller and smaller intervals beginning at time equals five. So keep in mind for this problem, and you do not need to memorize this equation, but you might remember it from physics, um, the, the distance fallen after t seconds is by y equals 4.9 t squared, and we're going to say s of t in this class to denote our position. So s of t is the position after t seconds, and that's because we're dealing with meters per second and gravity here. So let's look at the time interval between 5 and 6 seconds first. We can easily find the average velocity. That would just be the change in position. So s of 6 minus s of 5 all over 6 minus 5. Again, that's just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, how we typically find slope. And so you would do that for each of the time intervals. So again, say this is a testing scenario, what would I do in my calculator? The first thing is I would put in my calculator my y1 4.9x squared, which is what we were using in this example here. And then I would go to second quit, and I would do vars y1 of, and now I have to actually find the slope. In my last example, I put the slope into my y1, and now I have just put the equation into my y1. So I'm going to find the slope um, between 5.001 and 5. So I'm going to take that value and divide it, because that was y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, okay? So that's my slope from slightly above, and now I'm going to just put it all in one line. See, I did it in two lines on that one, but 
but I'm going to start with parentheses. So now I'm going to go from a little bit on the other side. So I'm going to do 5 and 4.999. And oops, I forgot to put a minus sign. Here's a golden opportunity for me to show you a really neat button. So I want to insert on top of here, second insert, I want to insert a minus. Boom. Okay, fix that error. And so end my parentheses all over x2 minus x1. 5 minus 4.999. Okay, so I see that I am approaching about 49 meters per second from both sides. So again, in a testing scenario, I'm not going to do this whole table of values. I'm just going to look at a value slightly larger and a value slightly smaller, and I'm done. So let's just quickly look at what this means graphically. And here's really a summary of what we've been doing. We've been taking this slope of the secant line, and that's our average velocity between two points. And we've been using that to approximate the slope of our tangent line. And that's our instantaneous velocity. So that's really, really key here, that the slope of the secant line is our average velocity versus the slope of our tangent line. That's our instantaneous velocity. And that's it for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed.